blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Lord, I worship you. I Oh 
Oh, 
glory, with your glory, holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. against 
thee seven times in a day. And seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent. I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase, increase our faith. Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for your word this day, O oh Lord God. And we ask for wisdom. We ask for your spirit of wisdom, your spirit of understanding, your spirit of knowledge to be with us here right now. And your spirit, O oh Lord God, to enable us to apply the word that we are about to receive in our lives. In Jesus' almighty and matchless name, amen. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. God Almighty, God of power and might, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. I am so happy to be with each and every one of you all here today. And remember last week, last week we um, we covered quite a bit um, in, in that area of judging and judgmental. And I hope that you all went through it again, you know, and, and you understand the depth of it is that it's, it, you can judge. But the same measure, just remember that the same measure that the, of, of, of judgment that you place on other people is the same measure that is that you are going to be judged by. That's what it's about, you know? So, I hope that you, you, you reflected on it, that you went through it, you know, and it brought some conviction, it brought some knowledge, it brought some understanding to each and every one of you. In Jesus' almighty and matchless name, you know? And offenses will come. Offenses will come. This is what Jesus was saying. Offenses will come. It's impossible for things not to happen. You know, and that's, that's why I was telling you last week that when Peter went to Jesus and asked him, how often shall I forgive my brother? How often shall I forgive? Up to seven times. And Jesus told him, no, 70 times seven. 70 times seven, Peter. It is because he was trying to tell us, and he is telling us, he wasn't trying, he is telling us that by nature, it is our nature to either offend someone or be offended by someone. That's us. That's the human being. So if it's like that, then we need to forgive and forgive we must. Forgive we must. Now what kind of offenses? We're talking about all kind of offenses, you know? All kind of offenses. But forgiveness is a must. Um, you know, and today, I want to take a look at, um, at Rahab, right? And um, Rahab was a harlot, all right? Rahab was a harlot. And the thing about it, there is no greater offense, trespass, or sin at that point in time, right, than being a harlot, all right? That was the, the tip of the thing. You, you were a sinner. You were condemned if you were a harlot. You know, you could be stoned to death for being a harlot, you know? But, but we find that... Um, Rahab's story is a unique story, and that's why I want to go through with it, go through it a little bit with you today, right? Now we can find Rahab in in three New Testament scriptures in the book of Matthew, chapter one. I want you to put your bookmark right now, book of Hebrews, right, chapter eleven. Put your bookmark right now in the book of James, chapter two, right. Put your bookmark right now in the book of Joshua, chapter two and chapter six. All right, so we can find Rahab in a few books. Now, it, her, the name is mentioned in two, two areas of the, the book of Psalms also. But we won't be going into that right now. Today, we will be sticking with the three New Testament scripture verses areas. And we're going to stick with Joshua, right, chapter 2. All right? We're not going to go into chapter 6 neither. All right? So, what I want you to do is turn your, your Bibles right now. We started from the book of James. We become an from this way, go this way, right? So turn your Bibles right now to the book of James, chapter 2. And I, immediately as I say this to you, immediately as I say this to you, when I say James chapter 2, what's going to click in your mind? What are gonna, what's going to click in your mind? Faith and works, faith and works, faith and works, all right? Amen? It's, it's, it's something we got we gotta get we gotta get there with some of these things now you know we covered the book of James in our in our um, devotions right so you should have an idea if you were following along where we are right now right and a bit of an understanding in the area of faith and works all right now before I, I mention Rahab I'm gonna read we in James chapter 2 I'm gonna read from verses 21. Alright, so I want you to just follow along with me. Alright, 
I'm reading from the King James Version as you know. Alright, so we are James chapter 2, verses 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Let me let me let me let me let me, let me, let me say that over one more time. Alright, verse 22. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. All right, was faith made perfect? Now, that's the verse I want you to, 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 to sit with right now, all right? And the scripture was fulfilled, saying, Abraham believed God and was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. All right, so verse 25. Here we come to Rahab. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messages and had sent them, sent them out another way, right? Look at the first word, how this verse coincides with, with what, why I wanted you to, to keep um, verses 22, right? Likewise, the word is likewise, so it is compared to exactly what Abraham did. So she's saying likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messages and had sent them out another way. So there we see it again. Rahab is in, right, the area of, of, of justification. Just as Abraham, where her works made the faith perfect. Alright? So we see where she is. Look, Rahab is mentioned. Rahab the harlot. They didn't leave that out. They didn't leave that out. Look at what they said. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot. So that thing, sometimes, you know, in life, some of the things that, um, or how people viewed us, right, sticks with us. You know, you might have done something wrong some time ago, some years ago. You may have been young, right? But sometimes that stigma sticks with you. So they, they kept calling Rahab what? A harlot. Look at it right here, right? Likewise, what also was not Rahab the harlot, right? They kept calling her the harlot, all right? So let's um, just book before book of Hebrews chapter 11, right? This is 31 now, the book of Hebrews. Look at where Rahab is. I want you all to see where Rahab is. Rahab is in the gallery of faith. Chapter 11 in the book of Hebrews is what we call the gallery of faith. Look at where Rahab stands. Now hear what the verse says. By faith. The harlot, you see, they, they're not leaving that out. The harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not. When she had received the spies with peace. So again, it shows what she did. The works that she did, right? But, and her faith in what she did. Alright? So it says, by faith, the harlot Rahab. So all through, no matter what, they are keeping this, this title. She is stamped as being a harlot. She is recognized as being a harlot. Now, this works for them in the book of Joshua. Let me take you to Joshua real quick. This works for them in the book of Joshua. You see, Rahab being a harlot, you know, anybody could have visited her. So that is why she was the perfect cover for the spies to go to her house. All right? To go to her house. So, so, so she was, that was the perfect cover. She could have entertained anybody and anybody would have known who the harlot was. You just got to ask me, they will tell you who the harlot was. All right? So the book of Joshua now in chapter 2. Now Joshua, Joshua, they, they, they're going to they gonna take over Jericho, right? Their conquest is to head towards Jericho. They're going to take over Jericho, right? So Jericho is a fortified city. But there is Rahab in the city, all right? So, so Joshua sends two spies into the city. Right? And immediately, just look at verses 1 in chapter 2 of the book of Joshua. And it says, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy, secretly saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. Now hear this. And they went and came into an harlot's house, named Rahab, and they lodged there. So they went to Rahab the harlot's house and lodged it there. Alright? Now this is the word that, that is repeated in the New Testament. Right? About what Rahab did for the people of God. Right? Because of her faith. Alright? This is the works that she did. She hid the spies. She received the spies. Alright? Now that's that stigma, as I said, is staying with Rahab. She's a harlot. She was introduced as an harlot. 
in the in the first in, in the first introduction in the book of Joshua, introduced as an hard. All right, as I said, there there that's a great offense. That's a great offense. Among the Hebrews, among the Israelites, being being called a harlot, you can be stoned to death. That is condemnation. They cast you out. They don't want to have nothing to do with you. That's the end of you because of something that you were doing. All right, because of the sin that you were doing. All right. So 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 these two two spies went to um, to Jericho. So they found Rahab's house. They hid in Rahab's house. Now somewhere along the line, the king found out that. Rahab had entertained these spies. All right? Rahab had entertained these spies. So he sent for Rahab, the harlot, and um, he asked Rahab to give up the two spies, but Rahab told him she didn't have the two, two spies. They left, and she didn't know where they went to. All right? Now, the thing about it is, verse 6 says, but she had brought them to the top of the roof and hid them with the stalks of flax. Right, which she had laid in order upon the roof. So these guys were hiding on top of the roof. And when the coast was clear, she let them go. All right. Now, the thing about it is, hear what Rahab said. Rahab told him, she said, For we heard, verses 10, how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites. Right, what you did unto the two kings of Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, who made utterly destroyed. Now, Sihon and Og, they were giants. So, right now, I'm about just to tell you that there is no big problem or situation that the people of God, the child of God, is not going to conquer and utterly destroy. All right, that is a word for you right now. There is no big problem. That's what a giant represents. That's what a giant represents a big problem in your life. And some of you might be having some big problems right now. And I'm telling you right now that we are no strangers to encountering big problems. We are no strangers to fighting giants. We have always fought giants. From the beginning, Abraham fought giants. Joshua is fighting giants. David fought, fought giants. And we got to fight giants the same way. Big problems. And we are going to utterly destroy them in the name of Jesus. So every big situation in your life right now, we surrender it on to Jesus because we know that he is mighty, he is powerful, and these problems are just going to go away. So, so, so Rahab the harlot was telling them that she knew, she heard about all that God had been doing. So for that reason, hear what she said. And as soon as we heard these things, our heart did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord God, the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Rahab confessed God. All right, Rahab confessed God. But she is, she is recognizing the power of God. And you know, even some of us right now, some of us don't recognize the power of God. Right? So I got to bring you in remembrance of these things. That God is a powerful God in heaven and in earth. And on the earth. And he does what he does. He does what he does for us. He protects us. Right? He, he provides for us. He blesses us. He, he opens his hands and he, he, he sets out that favor upon our lives. And we got to receive that in faith. Just as Rahab did. Because we know. You know, we know the things that he has done. We know where he has brought us from. We know the things that he has blessed us with. All right, so no big problem is gonna hurt us out. No big problem is gonna is gonna cause us any pain because we will utterly destroy it in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So, jo so Joshua sends them to Rahab, Rahab's house, and they 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 they, they make a, a, a contract with Rahab that when they do take the city, they are not gonna destroy Rahab. They are not going to destroy her family. Her house will be safe because of what she did, right? Because of what Rahab the harlot did, right? And I'm telling you that being a harlot is something very hard that, you know, people got to forgive. You know, it, it's, not a, it's not as easy as we, we just talking about it here. But in the biblical times, especially if you were Hebrew or Israelite, right? You could not. You would have been stoned, I told you, and persecuted for the line that you took, the line that you were walking, all right? So, so was adultery. 
So was fornication. You can be, you could have been stoned to death because of these things. They would have made you a stone heap, according to an old minister friend of mine who used to say, he say, you know, long they would have make you a stone heap. Yeah, they would have load stones upon you, man. All right, so that is what it means when you are hollered. Rahab the hollered. So they kept, that name is attached to her. It's attached to her. I'm going to come to this very quickly with you right now. All right, so we go into the book of Matthew. We go into the book of Matthew. Now I'm going to show you something. Right, I'm going to show you something, and because I need, I need you to understand how important it is. Right, how important it is for us to forgive people, for us to forgive people. Now, this is one of the clearest areas and of forgiveness and, and and washing clean that I have ever seen in my life. As clear out in the Bible. All right. Now I want you to look at something. Right, we'll be reading. We'll be reading. This is Matthew chapter one, from from verses one, from verses one. All right, to verses five. All right, and this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Now it goes in fourteen generations, fourteen generations, fourteen generations. All right, so here we go. Right, all right, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ. I want you all to read with me. I, I pray that some of you all are reading with me right now and following the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. All right, Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judas and his brethren, right? And Judas begot Perez, and Zara and Tamar, and Perez begot Eshram, and Eshram begot Aram, and Aram begot Aminabad, and Aminadab begot Nason, and Nason begot Salmon, all right? And Salmon begot Boaz, look at it, of Rechab, which is Rahab, all right? So this is the same Rahab who is the harlot. She's the harlot in Joshua. She's the harlot in, 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 in um, James. She's the harlot in Hebrews, right? So Boaz, Boaz and Rahab, they begot Salmon, all right? And Boaz begot Obed of Ruth. Salmon and uh, Ob Boaz begot Obed of Ruth. And Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David the king. And David the king begot Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah, right? But this here is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And I want you to see something because I want you all to understand something because this is some this this is where a lot of you all got to change, right? You're thinking right now and start to understand how powerful the blood of Jesus is and how powerful Jesus is because this is the lineage of Jesus. Now everywhere else, everywhere else Rahab is described as the harlot. That title is stick, stuck to her. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, when it comes to the lineage of Jesus Christ, Rahab ain't no harlot no more. Rahab is Rahab. Amen. Hallelujah. So when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to Jesus, all the old things are past and gone. All the old things that people had placed upon your life, they are past and gone. And that's what I'm telling you right now. In the name of Jesus, whatever you've been carrying, whatever stamp you've been you've been having over your life right now, it is gone. It is washed away because the blood of Jesus is all powerful and it cleanses every single impurity from your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what I wanted to bring you to. There is forgiveness in the name of Jesus. The thing, the thing, the blemish that you thought could not move away is gone in Jesus' almighty and matchless name. Just look at it right here. This is just so amazing. This is, And Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab. Of Rahab. Rahab ain't no harlot no more. When it comes to Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody say hallelujah. 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 So I want you all to, you all understand judgment. Now you all understand forgiveness. Understand forgiveness. We got to we got to be forgiven. You know, and Jesus said that. You all, you all, have you all ever looked at the fine print in the book of Matthew chapter 6? Look at the fine print in the book of Matthew chapter 6. Right? Verses 14 and verses 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You know what that means? Look at verses 15. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father Forgive you, your trespasses. People, be careful with the line that you are walking. 
Be careful in condemning people because it's the same measure that you are going to be condemned. Be careful in not forgiving people because you will not be forgiven. This is the word of God and I hope that you all hear what I'm saying and release that load and the burden that you all, you all have been carrying all your lives. Throw it away. And to those of you who thought that change could have never came, that a new day could have never came, that you would have not seen the silver lining. You might have done what you did quite a few years back. You may have done what you did, but through Jesus and through the blood of Jesus, you have been wiped clean. Your slate is clean. You have been forgiven. Forget about them. That's the devil trying to remind you of some stuff, but you keep moving forward and keep pleading the blood over your life because God has changed you. He has removed every scare from your life in your mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. What do you think? He died for no reason. He died so that we can be justified in the sight of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm about to close. I'm about to close with you. And this is a powerful piece of thing that I'm going to bring to you here right now. Because I want to remind you. I want to remind you about these two spies who went to Rehab. Right? I want to remind you about these two spies. You know, you know a lot of people have been calling me about their situations. Right? And the things that they've been going through. Some, maybe it's this, it's, it's this lockdown. Maybe it's because of uh, some kind of emotional stress. But a lot of people are going through quite a lot. All right. Now I want you all to recognize something, right? This is fresh. This is fresh word. This is fresh revelation. I want you all to recognize something. And those of you hearing it, tell your friends. Tell your friends. It's the word of God that you got to take to people so that they will be convinced. All right. It's the word of God you got to take to people so that they will understand your faith. All right. Now, 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 the two spies, right? They had to hide. In a place where I'm sure that it would have been uncomfortable. It would have been uncomfortable. But remember they had a, they had a purpose. All right, They had a purpose. And there was a reason why they had to do what they did. So they would have been uncomfortable. Can you imagine hiding on top of a roof? Right? Being covered with flax. Man you may have been itching. It would have been an uncomfortable position. We don't know if the sun was real hot. And suppose it was raining quite a lot. It would have been an uncomfortable position. You see, sometimes to escape one situation, hear what I'm telling you, man. Hear what I'm telling you. We may have to hide in another situation. Hallelujah. Give God praise for this word. Sometimes to escape one situation, we may have to hide in another situation. Sometimes to see one situation, God may put you in another. It may not be the most ideal situation to you. But it allows you to find out all about what we may need to know to move forward. Because that is what they were doing. They were getting ready to move forward. So God might put you in a situation that may not be the most ideal situation. You may be like the spies on top of the roof covered down with flax. But it, 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 it's for a reason. Because you are about to move forward. And I'm telling some of you all right now. Under this word, in this anointing, you are about to move forward. Look at the situation that you are in. And it may not be the most ideal situation. But God is about to move you forward. Hallelujah, Lord. You know, the job. You see, the job that you, 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 you think ain't perfect. Hold on to it. You are in that position for a reason. The position that you are in, right? The parent relationship, the present relationship that you may be in, all right? The present financial situation that you may be in, the present health situation that you may be in, God may have put you in that situation so you can look forward because he is about to burst you through it. You are about to burst through that situation. You are about to triumph. You are about to have victory. You are about to succeed. There is a deliverance coming right now in Jesus' almighty name. You are about to hear that sound. And when you hear that sound, you want to move forward. Because just like the walls of Jericho came tumbling down, they are all going to fall down around you. And you will have the victory in Jesus' almighty and matchless name. Hallelujah. This is a powerful word. This is a powerful word. You see, sometimes it's just so that you can have a view of what you are about to conquer and move into it. 
Everybody say move into it because we're going to be moving into something new. We are about to move into something new. We are about to move into something new. Just say move in your homes right now. Enemy, move in your homes right now. Enemy, move. Move out of your, your health situations right now. Enemy, move in your financial situation right now. Enemy, move in the situations of stress. Enemy, move in that situation in your relationship. Move because we are about to move. We were in that uncomfortable position. We were like the spies on the roof. But God is about to give you breakthrough. That is the word that God sent me with here today for you. And I pray that you receive it in the almighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that the word bless your heart. Right? Because I know, I know, you know, I've been hearing a lot of people been telling me about the situations that they've been in. And when God showed me this, he said, he said, listen, you got to let them know. Let them know, some of y'all who spoke to me recently, I'm letting you know that you are about to move. You are about to conquer. The walls that seem to have been big around you are about to fall. All right, God places you in that situation so you can see and spy out the land that you are about to have. So be a conqueror in Jesus' almighty and matchless name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Right now, right about now, I pray that you have your emblems ready with you. I pray that you have your emblems ready with you. All right? Because we're going straight into co to the communion. And I'm just going to read from verses 12 here to verses 15 for you. Right in the book of Joshua chapter 2, right here, right here. Right? And it says, Father God, now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord since I have showed you kindness that you... You will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. Give me a true token. And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sister and all that they have. And deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, our life for yours. If ye utter not this business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. Father God, we give you thanks. As we honor you today, as we glorify you, O oh Lord God, with your presence, and we know that you have given us a true token, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We know that you have given us a true token in Jesus Christ and in that resurrection, in the gospel, O oh Lord God. For is that what brings us to salvation? Knowing that he died, he was buried, and he rose again, defeating death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you thanks right now for his body. And this represents his body. This token represents his body. This emblem represents his body, which was broken for us. So that we shall have fellowship with you and healing in Jesus' almighty name. We give you thanks. You may break and partake. And in like manner, we hold the cup, and the cup, before he sucked, the Bible says, it represents his blood. The blood that cleanseth, the blood that was shed for you and I, the blood that was shed so that we be redeemed, the blood that was shed so that we be healed. And I pray, O oh Lord God, that every area of sickness and infirmity within our lives, amen, right now. That we have within us right now, O oh Lord God. When we partake of this cup, it shall be removed. And every slave shall be wiped clean. Because the blood of Jesus does it all for us. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. And we thank you, O Lord God, for what you have left us with. And this cup represents your blood. And if it represents your blood, it represents the light, and we are children of the light, and we shall not walk in the darkness, so we give you thanks in Jesus' almighty and matchless name, you may partake of the cup. Father God, we give you thanks, 
we give you praise and we honor you, O oh Lord God, for all that you have done, for all that you have shown us, for taking us through another day, another week, O oh Lord God, for bringing us back here again in oneness, O oh Lord God, in one accord to hear your word, to receive an anointing, to receive, O oh Lord God, that favor upon our lives, to receive this message, O oh Lord God, to know that we are about to move forward. Father God, to know that as we were placed in certain situations, it's just for us to see forward, O oh Lord God. So we thank you for the opportunity which we have. We thank you for the word. And we receive your word, O oh Lord God, with, with power, with authority, and with, 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 with greatness, O oh Lord God, with might in Jesus' own mighty name. We pray that everyone be safe in their travels. I pray that you continue to fellowship. Continue to support your local ministries, support your churches, support your pastors. Keep them in prayer as they keep you in prayer. And I pray that you all are safe and free from sickness and disease. Everything that the enemy has desired for you right now, we cast away and we cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing shall happen to you. You shall be well every day of your life. In Jesus' almighty and matchless name, be good. Be kind to one another. Seek each other's needs. I'm Pastor Solomon De La Rosa in God's grace.